In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a unique looking Blade Guard Veteran Captain to add to your White Scar army. If you're new here and you want to learn tips and techniques on how to paint and convert awesome minis, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to never miss a video. The new Blade Guard Veteran models are awesome, but I feel like they really lend themselves well aesthetically to more knightly chapters, such as the Black Templar. Now some of you may know that I'm a White Scar fan, and I really wanted to paint these up as such. Of course there is absolutely nothing wrong with painting them up as is, but I wanted to make my Blade Guard stand out. As you can imagine, this required a little bit of tweaking when it came to kit bashing. First off, I decided to remove the Power Sword. I have some third party power katanas that would fit the feel I want to go for. Ensure you make the slow and steady cuts with a sharp blade just under the cross guard. I like to place the piece on the cutting mat to have a stable base to work on. Once removed, keep the removed piece to add to your bits box. Then with a hobby knife and a file, incrementally remove the excess plastic away from the hand and the van brace. It's better to make small adjustments rather than hacking at it as it will allow you to be more accurate when fitting the new sword. Once you are happy, it's time to bathe the sword in the blood of a... Uh, <coughs> I mean any resin components you are using and a warm soapy bath. Give them a good scrub with a spare toothbrush to remove any release agent left behind by the moulding process. I got these awesome power katanas from a digital sculptor over on Twitter. I will put a link to Master Crafter Minis in the description below, check his stuff out. Once cleaned and dried, Cut the suka or the hilt, directly underneath the suba or handguard. Keep the hilt separate as we'll need this later. With a file and a hobby knife, I remove any remaining resin, ensuring that the handguard is nice and flush. I then dry fit the piece against the hand I'd already done. This is the perfect time to make any more adjustments that you need to do. When attaching the sword to the hand, be sure to use super glue rather than plastic glue, otherwise the resin will not stick properly. You might also want to consider pinning this piece for extra stability. Next I removed the hilt from the original power sword and tidied up the remaining plastic. This is anticipation for adding the katana hilt we'd cut off previously. The katana hilt I measured how much I needed to cut off by lining it up from underneath the handguard to where the bottom of the hand ended. This way I knew the correct length of the hilt that needed to be removed. And then stuck them together with super glue once I was happy with the fit. Looks pretty cool I think. This next bit is relatively easy. The Iron Halo on the backpack is awesome, but once again doesn't really fit a white scar in my opinion. I removed the Iron Halo using my hobby knife and cleaned up the separate parts. Again I kept the Iron Halo to add to my bits box.
So, what can I replace the iron halo with, I hear you ask? Well, nothing says white scars like a skull and a top knot. I had this orc head laying around in my bits box and I thought it would be perfect for what I was going for. So I gently removed the top knot from his shiny green head. I kept his head in case I wanted to mount it on a pike or something. Heretical Xeno scum. I like to dry fit the model together during the process to see how it's looking. What do you think so far? Next up, it's the iconography. Again, I find the iconography on the model, particularly the crosses, a little out of place when it comes to the theme. So this is where I got a little bit crazy. With my clippers, I started to remove the Indomitus symbol cross hanging from his waist. Now going back now. This kind of aggressive cutting is extremely daunting. You don't have to go this far if you don't feel comfortable doing it. If you do, however, make sure you take small cuts and dry fit frequently. Again, I used a hobby knife and a file to remove as much as I needed to. You don't have to remove every last bit as the component will hide most of it. Besides, the remaining plastic is a good anchor for the component to adhere to. Just a quick FYI, for this step and the next, I use components from the White Scar Primaris Upgrade Kit. I love this kit and I recommend picking it up if you want to spice up your White Scars. A cool little tip that I use is to grab a bit of sticky tack, we call it blue tack over here in the UK, and use it to help dry fit your components. It's a cheap way to get those pieces to stick without committing to sticking them with glue. Once happy with the fit, I glue the component down. The next part was the tilting plate. This is such an awesome little detail on a lot of Space Marine models, but for the White Scars, I think not. I needed more skulls and more hair slash fur. So for this bit, I dipped back into the White Scars upgrade kit. I removed the excess plastic that would have allowed the tilting plates peg to slide in to ensure a closer fit. and then cut down the back of the skull of my clippers and filed down a little bit more dry fitting as I went until I was happy with how it looked. The blade guard shields are super awesome and really flavorful for the theme, but yep, you guessed it, not quite white scar enough for me. This part was probably the most difficult bit for me. I could have simply got a storm shield and removed the iconography from it, but I don't have any. However, I did have some Tau drones. Hmm. Thankfully, the Tau aesthetic is very clean, much like the Space Marines, so I thought it would be a great fit. Using my hobby knife, I removed some of the detail on the underside of the drone so it would not stick out as much when I attached it to the Space Marine's hand. I also used some sandpaper and a file to smooth the underside down once I'd finished cutting to ensure a level surface. Then using some milliput, I mixed equal parts together until it was a solid yellow colour. 
Please be careful when using Millipart. It is an epoxy putty and can produce an adverse reaction to your skin. I then filled in the areas where the aerials would go to give the impression of a smooth, continuous surface. Don't worry about being too neat here. I'm going to remove the excess after the Millipart is dry in a few hours. Once dry, using my hobby knife, I slowly removed the excess milli part and used my file to smooth down the surface for a smooth finish. I loved the skeleton on the front of the original Captain Shield and I felt that I wanted to include it in this model, so I carefully and painstakingly <laughs> removed the moulded piece that was still on the shield. It worked. I then stuck the two pieces together. I was super happy with how that came out. With a bit of bending, I teased the skull and neck on the skeleton back to fit the contour of the shield. I then stuck it down with plastic glue. You might need to use a clamp or a collection of elastic bands to ensure the piece adheres to the shield properly. To mount the shield somewhere, I grabbed two Space Marie arms from my bits box. An outstretched handless one from an OG Marie, and one with a clenched fist from the multi-part Primaris Intercessor kit. You know, the one with the little flip-up display dial thingamajigum. I first removed the soft arm a bit at the end of the outstretched arm with a hobby knife and smoothed down the surface with a file. Secondly, I removed the clenched hand from the other arm and repeated the same process as above, dry fitting again as I went along. I used some sticky tack a lot at this stage, so I could ensure that the exact position I wanted the arm and hand to be before committing with plastic glue. To finish the arm off, I grabbed a shoulder pad from the White Scar upgrade kit and stuck it to the upper arm. And then finally, I removed the peg to allow me to fix the arm to the torso in a more natural position. I had ordered some third party samurai helmets from Puppets of War, but at the time of the editing this video they hadn't arrived, so in the meantime I used the original helmet which is still equally as cool. I wanted to remove the Templar-esque cross on the side of the face grill, so once again I used some Millipart to fill it in. I repeated the same process as a shield once the putty had dried, gently removing the excess millipart using a hobby knife and a file. I then grabbed a space wolf head from my bits box 
one with a top knot and remove the hair using my hobby knife. Yes, I know, another top knot. Once the helmet is complete, this White Scar Blade Guard Veteran Captain is ready to paint. And there we have it folks, the Indomitus Blade Guard Veteran Captain of the White Scars. This process can also be used for the Lieutenant and the Standard Blade Guard Veterans. I would normally recommend that conversion disc big are specifically for HQ models, but seeing as the Blade Guard have so much detail, I feel that with a little bit of extra time, it's worth the effort. Like with many models, you can really make them look unique, and something you would be equally happy placing on the table, or on your shelf. All that is left for me to do is say thank you to each and every one of you for watching and for sticking around to the end of the video, it really does mean a lot. Stay safe and don't forget to keep the hobby alive. <laughs>